Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my channel. In this video, I would like to present matching filter derivation for um, time discrete system in frequency domain with proven by using mathematical modeling in Python. For a match filter in the frequency domain, I will consider input complex pulse signal with unity power and certain lengths, input complex white noise with also unity power and complex impulse response, unity power for both input signal and additive white noise means that signal to noise ratio on match filter input equal to one. Uh, let's see how uh, will be changed signal to noise ratio on matched filter output. So, um, according to matched filter definition, impulse response of the matched filter can be expressed as conjugated version and shifted in time version of the input signal about time k0, whereas k0 means the length of the input signal. In this case, discrete Fourier transform of the impulse response can be rewritten as a discrete Fourier transform of the time-shifted signal. And by applying time-shift theorem for discrete Fourier transform, I can get here conjugated version of the spectrum of the input signal with additional phase coefficient that consists of uh, argument equal to time-shift value. Let's uh, see what is the noise power on the matched filter output. By applying inverse discrete Fourier transform on the product of uh, spectrums uh, white noise and impulse response in time k0, because in k0 there is a maximum value on the matched filter output, I can get this expression so uh, without these phase coefficients, because phase coefficient has inverted arguments and therefore product of these coefficients will be equal to 1. So I can get a summation of uh, two spectrums, let's say white noise and conjugated input signal spectrum. By applying Parseval theorem here, I can shift from a uh, frequency domain to a time domain. So what is about power of the noise? So since noise is a random uncorrelated process, uh, here uh, I will talk about expected value of variance of the noise. In this case, uh, square modulus of the noise on matched filter output can be expressed as a product of two summation in different time. So, different time, it means that here are different coefficients, k1 and k2. By rewriting this, by, by rewriting this expression in two summation, again, in different time moments, k1 and k2, so I will get here expected value of noise, since noise is a random uncorrelated process, and product of the input signal in time k1 and k2. This expression overall will be not be equal to zero only in case when k1 equal to k2, because noise is an uncorrelated process. Again, since noise is an uncorrelated process, so this expression will not be equal to zero only in case when k1 equal to k2. In this case, I can, I can rewrite um, power of the output noise is a power spectral density of the noise. So in our case, it's a unity because it's a one, because uh, uh, here I consider noise, white noise with unity power and uh, power of the input signal. So power of the input signal, quite simple. I just, I just make summation here of uh, during pulse length and in time k1, k0, k0, I will get maximum value here. Okay, let's consider a uh, signal output with the match filter output. So product of uh, spectrums uh, input signal impulse response. Uh, we, uh, I will get here a square modulus of the input signal since um, product of uh, complex spectrum and its conjugation gives me a uh, square modulus because conjugation doesn't change modulus of the signal, of the complex signal and additional phase coefficients that's caused by impulse response. In this case, <coughs> power of the signal again in time k0 uh, after taking in the very discrete Fourier transform can be rewritten as a square power of the input signal. So it's a k0 
it's a square of k0. So this result is very remarkable. This result is very remarkable because it shows that um, signal power and module filter output doesn't depend on a uh, type of modulation of the signal or parameters of modulation. So it depends only on um, signal energy or on signal length. In this case, signal to noise ratio is a ratio as a ratio of um, power of the signal in time k0 and expected value of the noise uh, will give me a signal to noise ratio that in k0 time greater than signal to noise ratio on much of filter input. So this is a k0 time, so uh, proportional to the length of the input signal. It's a so-called much of filter gain. Okay, uh, let's see uh, how the theory works in uh, Python by using mathematical modeling of the matched filter and frequency uh, domain. For mathematical modeling, so uh, here uh, I have input complex signal, so it's a pulse uh, and uh, here I have an option. I can uh, set here a pulse with a linear frequency modulation or without linear frequency modulation. It's a complex noise with unity power. It's an impulse response as a conjugated version and shifted in time version of the input signal. And uh, uh, apart from this, here I calculated average power. Here I calculate average power of the input signal and um, noise just for making sure that uh, both noise and signal uh, have a unity power. So afterwards I apply a Fourier, a discrete Fourier transform uh, for noise uh, signal and impulse response. Here I am finding product of the spectrums, uh, noise and impulse response, signal and impulse response. And afterwards by applying inverse discrete Fourier transform I can get an output for um, either signal or noise and the uh, output of the match of the match and filter so it's an additive summation of uh, output uh, for the signal and output for the noise okay let's see how it works so basically I will need to run. So first of all, uh, average power, signal average power is always 0 dB. Signal noise power is a little bit different from uh, 0 dB because here I have uh, not enough number of samples. So if I increase here a number of samples, so uh, I will get this value equal to 0. Let's see, uh, let's see how signal will be changed during matching filtering. So again, this is a much of filter and input is desirable signal. <clears throat> First plot here shows a modulus of the input signal. So it shows that the modulus is equal to 1 and the number of samples equal to 200. And uh, it, uh, apart from this, it uh, shows um, imaginary part of the input signal and impulse response. So why I show here imaginary part? Because I would like to show that uh, it's in red color that imaginary part of the impulse response. It's not only shifted in time It's also conjugated version of the input signal and conjugation for complex It means that in inversion of the imaginary part. So it can be seen from this plot uh, This is the modulus of uh, signal spectrum and impulse response. So as I mentioned before conjugation doesn't change modulus of the complex signal and as can be seen from the plot um, modulus of uh, the either spectrum of the input signal or impulse response it's a equal it's an equal modulus it's a equal spectrums <clears throat> okay then please pay attention on the product of the two spectrums it's a real part so as can be seen uh, from the uh, plot it consists of a uh, harmonic here and frequency of this harmonic is equal time shift value. So again, this harmonic, it's uh, harmonic is caused by this additional phase coefficient that we, um, that yeah, I have here. And um, <clears throat> since, yeah, I'm considering uh, here a product and frequency depends on time shift value here. Um, after applying by inverse discrete for your transform, I will get an output of the signal on much filter output. So as can be seen from the plot, uh, modulus uh, uh, of the signal is increased in k zero time. So in my case, in, in my case, it's uh, in two hundred times. So it can be seen from maximum value and uh, um, maximum of uh, the signal will be achieved in the moment where the 
uh, length of our pulse is ended. So it's uh, in 200, but uh, since indexing here starting from zero, it's uh, in time, in, it's uh, in number of samples, it's in 199. Okay, let's uh, see what about noise. Here I will keep this uh, plot. <coughs> what about noise? <coughs> um, okay, and this is the noise. Basically, um, modulus, uh, imaginary part of the noise, it's a signal spectrum. And what's the interesting here, it's a product of two spectrums. So uh, if we compare with um, input signal, so uh, product of uh, these two spectrums doesn't consist this harmonic, and of course, in this case, after applying a virtual discrete Fourier transform, we will get no, no gain in a sample of um, equal uh, where the, our pulse is ended. Okay, um, <clears throat> so uh, let's change uh, parameters of the input signal. I just will uh, remove uh, linear frequency modulation and let's change. Let's see uh, how it will affect on much filter output or especially on energy of the match field on the signal on match filter output okay so um this is the input signal so as can be seen it, it doesn't consist any kind of modulation so um and uh, this is a match filter output so as can be seen from the plot that uh, uh, we have since the same uh, much filter gain so it's equal to number of samples uh, of the input signal and the much filter gain is achieved is uh, achieved uh, in uh, time equal to 199 so in our case uh, so this is the time where our input impulse is ended so uh, it's just proves again that a much filter gain doesn't depend on type of modulation of the signal and depends only on signal length or on signal energy. Okay, I hope um, this uh, video was uh, very interesting for you. So if you have any questions, so please uh, uh, don't hesitate to ask in the comment below. Bye bye.